It was just a very common word when they talked about us because we was, my mother used to tell us, sticks and stone will break your, your bones, but names will never hurt. So we was kind of not paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. Now, they had other wrestlers that couldn't handle it. I mean, especially my, my, my friend Thunderbolt Patterson. I mean, he couldn't handle it for, for, for nothing. Mm -hmm. Ole Anderson, every time he talked to me, he used the word. Really? It came out of Ole Anderson's mouth like, like, like water out of a, a sink. And I could name thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of other wrestlers that have used the term. They had not only just black word, Ivan Puska got called a dumb Polak every day of his life. A d dumb Polak every day of his life. You know, Captain Lou Albano got called name because he was Italian. I ain't going to call the name, but you know what name Kidding, they used yeah. for him. No, it was another one. Uh, Thomas W. Oh, what? I, you could say it. I ain't going to say that. I got a lot of Italian friends. I, I just can't say that. But you see what I'm saying? That, that, he was called that a lot. Now, what Vince McMahon did, and nobody noticed, there's two things Vince got rid of. And nobody noticed. Yeah, right. All your top wrestling stars from 1980, I mean from 19, yeah, 1980, because that's when I started. Anything before that, I don't know. From 1980 to 1985, if you notice, they was all minorities. Because mm -hmm. Vince Sr. felt that you should have a person to represent every group of people in the, in the, like, the big city. Like, like when you come to Boston, you know, you got Irish, you got Scottish, you got Black, you got Jamaicans, you, you got uh, Oriental. So you got a mixer of different groups of people in all your big major cities. So Vince figured you should have a person to represent each person in there. What Vince Jr. did in 1985, he took all the minorities off the top and put Caucasians on top. Mm -hmm. That was the Earl of Huck Hogan, Randy Savage, uh... They have not been a top black wrestler since JYD in the main event, what we call the main event, you right. know, the top, yep, top, top position. They never even pushed Mark Henry to that level, even though he had the ability to go that level. Well, I know Booker T had a main event run with them. Ah, uh, uh, but he never got that level. Rock? Yeah, yeah. No, no, the Rock is Samoan. Yeah. Yeah, he's Samoan. But, but what you see... Point I mean, you is look, very well right, made. Well, even now, well even made. now, you look back behind you. I yeah, mean, you no, see the same. Right. Yeah, you see the same thing. You know, when you look at TV, you, you know, you see you see a lot of Caucasian. You don't see, and then the do the blacks that they do got, can't no black person watch them. Yeah, I can't watch them booty hole guys. I know you. You're not I a fan can't of the watch new day. That. I can't watch that Stetcher Fletcher guys coming out there grinding in the air. I can't watch it. I, I can't. I, every time it come on, I watch the program. I, I change it. I, I can't watch it. All right, Tony. Well, we can get into race relations. But they on could. All right, but they're continue. making money at it. People they're doing like very it. well. Yeah, they're doing very well with it. You know. But you, it's not your personal cup of tea. No, no, no. no well, right no, now, no. I, and this is a very interesting topic, and I, I don't think you're wrong by any stretch of the imagination. I really want to focus in on these, this subject that the fans wanted to discuss with certain vices. Now, you began to have a love. It's not a lust. It's a love for these feet. No, no. No. You keep saying feet. I don't shoes. Like it's shoe. It's women's a shoe shoes. Yep. Yeah, you see, I was raised in the country. So I just want to clarify it. It's not men's shoes. It's only women's shoes. Women. Okay. No, I, I want nothing to do with no man in no kind okay. of way. Ain't got nothing to do with no man. I just man. wanted to clarify. No, yeah, it, I want to clarify that too. I don't want nothing to right. do with no man. So you're not, no any, you're not interested in any Air no Jordans No, interested in nothing like that. man. Okay. Ain't nothing the man can do for me. <laughs> nothing the man can do for me. No. All right, good. It's up to be my friend. Absolutely. I like men friend. There now, you go. Now, I may tease with you. Just play along with you because guys, it part of just being a wrestler, guys would rip you about anything. Sure. Oh, that's you know, right. I went in the shower with, for my first time and all the guys come in, big guys, hairy chest, garlic smelly guy. Oh, man, look at the pretty ass on Tony Atlas. For about a week, I was afraid to take a shower with, <laughs> with him. Then George Scott, who was my mentor, said, Tony, they just, they just ripping you. Yeah. He said, don't put them over. He said, next time they tell him you got a pretty ass, tell them they got one too. If you don't said, sell it, it, don't stop. Don't no. sell it. Don't put it over. Don't put it over. So sure enough, they came in and told me I had a pretty ass. I said, yeah, you got a pretty nice white ass, too. And then they left me alone because they couldn't rip me no more. Right. Well, people have certain vices in life. I mean, it's a, it's a normal thing in this day and age, especially with the Internet being the way it is. But at what point did this love of these women's shoes and the love I of the, 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 the feeling of the feet begin to interfere with your wrestling career? Because it to, did at one point. Yes, it did. It did, yes, it did. 
And one thing that, uh, that uh, uh, this lady wrestler told me one time, she said, I thought Vince was a genius. I said, he is. She said, because I told her story, and all the wrestlers know this story, I, and I, SD almost brought it up at the Hall of Fame. SD and I, we was tag team partner long before Rocket Johnson came to WWE. He wasn't even in the WWE. Then it was me and it was Tony Atlas and SD Special Delivery Jones. And, and the, the world tag team champion at that time was Mr. Fuji and Saito. And we worked a, a program the, the month before at the Philly, at Philadelphia Spectrum. Mm -hmm. And where I got busted open, I got blood. And so they took me back to the dress room. So SD had to fight both of them by himself. Mm -hmm. So just as they started getting the best of SD, here I come down the, the ring doing the old, you know, 1776 gimme. My head was wrapped and everything. You always know. works. Yeah, it always, always works. works. And so I come running to the ring where the people got all excited and everything. So I ran them off. Then it came back in the following match where it was uh, Tony Guerrero and Rick Montel was going to fight Fuji and Saito mm -hmm. with special referee guest Tony Atlas. Oh, okay. Where the same thing happened. They jumped me again. Now I'm coming back the following week to for the title. And, and uh, that the week before, Captain Lou Abman always tried to give me advice. He was a great guy. He said, Tony, don't screw up. They're going to go all the way with you if you don't mess it up. They're going to go all the way with you. So I went to tell this girl on the phone, and she said, I got some new tennis shoes. I said, you do? She said, oh, yeah, I, these shoes are going to walk all over you when you get here. And I said, well, it's going to be about two months before I have any time off to leave. I said, I'm booked solid straight for two months. I said, maybe you can catch a ticket to come here. And then she said, well, you can come here for one day. They're not going to miss you. And she kept talking about these tennis shoes, kept talking about these tennis shoes. Finally, I took and left, got hop on the airplane, left my car at the Newark airport. For some reason, Chief Stormboat came up to me, and my keys were locked in the car. And I said, then I locked my keys in the car. I said, I can't get to the show tonight. I was happy. Now, Chief, to me, I, he was trying to help me. I thought he was, it was your messing up thing, because now I got an excuse to go. I can't get in my car. So Chief said, well, I would take you to Philly. He said, this is one of the most important nights of your life, so you need to go to Philly tonight. You really need to be there. And uh, he said, I'll take you to Philly, and I would get a locksmith. We come back here. I would bring you back here where you can get your car. I said, turn it. If I do, if I go with Chief, I ain't going to get them tennis shoes. So I said, no, I, I don't want to do that because at the locksmith, blah, 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 I just was saying all type of stuff. She said, what the hell am I going to I'm going to bring you back. So as he's talking, I'm walking away. I'm trying to get away from Chief because mm -hmm. all I could think about were them damn shoes. Got on the airplane. Went, back then, you could buy a ticket at the counter. You just throw the money down. Yeah, you could yeah. buy a ticket in cash back then. You know, this is well, 81 or 82. You could just pay cash right. for your ticket. So I got me a, a plane ticket. I flew all the way to L.A. The girl walked on me and everything. We did our thing. Now I had to find out a reason to come back. I told that story to this lady wrestler named Amanda Storm. Mm -hmm. She said, see, I told you Vince ain't no genius. I said, why is that? He said, if he was smart, he would have got a girl and paid her just to follow you around with a pair of tennis shoes. He said, he would have hired that girl to follow you around. He said, that way you wouldn't have to hop a plane to go get it. That's why people, uh, the barbarian, I told him about it. He said, oh, I want to see it, boss. I want to see that. He got an airline storage it to walk on me 30,000 feet in the air. So you had, um, geez, I don't, I'm trying to think of the term that maybe you'd use for uh, the, uh, well, I'm going to have to try and be a little bit more discreet about that, but you actually had this foot experience up in the air. 30,000 30, feet, 35,000 feet in the air. I laid down in the aisle there, and the stewardess walked on me. The barbarian loved it. Is there a version of the Mile High Club for people with the foot fetish? Well, there's, there's a lot of people that got certain things, but a lot of people keep things uh, under wrap because 
we are so judgmental. Yeah. I had a buddy of mine that was telling me a funny story. He comes by my house. We invite him over for dinner. He said, me, he take me fishing a lot. I go hunting with him a lot up in Maine. I live in Maine. Yeah. And he said, he would say, well, you know Tony Atler got a, you know, got a shoe fatty. He said, oh, yeah. He said, yeah, he let him, the girls walk on him in tennis shoes. He said, he said, oh, that's sick. That's what he told my buddy. Oh, that's sick. Let the girl step on you with the shoes on. So this other girl came along. I, as they were talking, the woman came along, and he asked the woman, said, can I see your feet? So the woman took the shoe off. He started sucking her toes. To him, sucking toes is okay. Mm -hmm. Getting but stepped on is sick. Not the but shoe. not the shoe. You see what I'm saying? Now, he's an old toe sucker. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm an old face walker. And we both, is, you know, what, what, what we call normal. But his normalcy to him was more normal than my normalcy. Like another person could be gay. He figured he's more normal or, or, or than another person that is maybe into S and M. You see? Yeah. We everybody got something that don't fit. When you left, when you walked out on WWE in the middle of that run, when you were supposed to go to Philadelphia, did you miss something in particular that night that was going to happen that you know of or not? I took it took away S D Jones. One and only chance of becoming champion. Wow. He was, we was going to, according to the way Chief were talking. Wow. The Chief said, this is going to be one of the most important days of your life. And on top of it, I, they would start, I always starting the program with me in Backland. I wrestled Backland in, in Baltimore the week before that. Mm -hmm. And Backland got disqualified. They was working towards making me the first black world champion. So I think what the idea was to first put the world belt, a tag belt, Thank with me you, and SD. Yeah. Then have, and because I remember talking to the Moon Dog, he was in Japan, and they were going to bring the Moon Dogs in, and me and SD were going to drop the title to the Moon Dog. Mm -hmm. That's why they wanted SD with me, because SD was going to be the one to drop the title. Then I was going to move on and go against Backlund for the uh, world championship. World you see, that was the plan. But then I walked out, and all their plans got squashed. In hindsight, do you regret? Oh, no, I yeah. mercy. Yes, I do. Yes, you I passed do. probably a lot of money. Yes, yes I do. Yeah. Because people that got fetishes, because a fetish is hard to fulfill. It, it's very, very hard to fulfill. Uh, if you want to do something normal, you can find anybody do something normal. It's very difficult to get a person to step on you. Mad I mean, have you. you ever had odd reactions from people that you've asked all to step time, on you? Because it's something that they don't understand. Mm -hmm. so, so I get that all the time. So because, Do people think it's a joke when you ask them to walk Well, what them? it is, it, it's something, a fetish is something that is so unordinary that it's hard to get. Yeah. It, it's very, very hard to get people uh, uh, to, uh, to do that. I can get oil sex from a woman easier than I can get walked on. You know, that'd be no it's problem. It's considered more normal. It's more normal in her, in their way of thinking. Because, because we all live in this little bubble of how things should be. Yeah. And we don't know that, that out of every human being that was ever born on this earth, since biblical time, since Adam and Eve, not one person had been born since the beginning of time with the same DNA or fingerprint. So we all got different things that, that would seem not normal uh, to me, but very normal to another person, mm -hmm. you know. Years and years ago, in, uh, uh, we had what they call a church, and the church kept us in a certain land. So people always did things in secret, mm -hmm. behind the dark doors, behind closets. They, they hid and did what they want to do so they could fit into society. I just got tired of hiding. Did I, you have to hide the love of the shoes? Oh, yeah. Well, I did. used to tell girls all type of stuff. I'd tell them. She said, why do you want me to walk on? I said, uh, my muscles are so tight that, that uh, uh, massaging with your hand don't work. So only the pressure of being walked. Of the shoe. Right. Uh, they had to walk. They, 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 uh, they, the first thing they always do is try to take the shoes off. I said, no, 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 no. Leave the shoes on. Keep I them on. Yeah, but they want to take them off. Every time I say walk on my back, they go to take the shoes off. And then I... Uh, now, I, I got to ask you this, Tony. Would, uh, that would you only have them do it with new shoes or used shoes? Well, would you it, have people walk in off the street with, you know, dirty bottoms of their well, feet and depend, walk on it shoes and walk on how bad the urge is. Really? See, so there it, were times it, someone right. would come in walking on the street 
and then you'd have them walk if all the over urge, you. If the urge is right, yeah. Really? Yeah. But the one thing about having a shoe fetish, and if those that have seen the tape, I allow women to punch me and kick me because I become so submissive that I let her do what she wants to make her feel more dominant. My job is to make that woman feel dominant. And well, a lot of women got a lot of built-up frustration. Yes. So they, as, as a man would say, it's a great way to relieve PMS. The World Wrestling Federation was live in Leesburg, Virginia, Sunday, March the 6th, 1983. In the opening contest, Baron Mikel Cicluna beat Mac Rivera. Eddie Gilbert with the win over Johnny Rods. Charlie Fulton battled Jose Estrada to a draw. Judy Martin and Elizabeth Chase defeated Terry Shane and Joyce Grable. And in the main event, Superfly Jimmy Snooker and Rocky Johnson victorious over the Wild Samoans via disqualification. If you were in Leesburg Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our acclaimed Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Inside Us at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay per view, watch alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times join our growing family at patreon.com backslash boston wrestling expect the unexpected in 2021